there were many causes to the Revolutionary War where the colonies decided to split with Britain. One reason was the high taxes Britain imposed on the colonies after the French and Indian War. Britain won the war against the French and Indians but was in debt, so it decided to tax colonies and the colonists of course didn't like this. England's strong belief in mercantilism also led to revolution. Mercantilists believed that a state's power was dependent on its ability to minimize importation and maximize exportation. Doing so would increase species, species is another word for gold or silver coins. Staying true to mercantilist ideology, Britain passed the Navigation Act which placed high duties and tariffs on colonies if they traded with anyone outside the British Empire like with France or Spain. Side note, tariffs and duties are synonyms for taxes. Once Greenville was appointed Prime Minister, he passed the Sugar Act which placed a duty on foreign goods containing sugar. Greenville also passed the Stamp Act, which now required all legal documents, newspapers, pamphlets, etc. to have a stamp. Stamps were only sold at Greenville's treasury for a very high price. Colonists became really upset with the Crown. They cried no taxation without representation. The funds collected from these taxes were going to Britain and the colonists were not benefiting. The colonists felt they shouldn't be taxed since they weren't represented in the British government. Britain replied everyone is virtually represented in their parliament. Sons of Liberty was a radical group created by colonists as a response to the stamp and sugar acts imposed by Britain. They terrorized British officials responsible for implementing the acts. They were successful in repealing the acts imposed by Greenville. Although they were successful in repealing sugar and stamp acts, Britain quickly passed the Declaratory Act which stated Britain had the power to tax the colonies in the future if they needed to. It's important to note no new taxes came from the Declaratory Act and that it was more of a power statement from Britain. After the Declaratory Act, a new Prime Minister came by the name of Charles Townshend who wanted to raise taxes again. He passed the Tea Act which removed duties on tea sent to colonies from the East Indian Tea Company. This is important because it lowered the cost of East India tea for the colonists undercutting the price of tea sold by local colonial merchants, causing colonists to get upset. The Tea Act resulted in the Boston Tea Party where colonists dressed up as Native Americans and dumped the East India Tea into the Boston Harbor as protest. The colonists' behavior wasn't well received by Britain, who as a response passed the Intolerable Acts of 1774. Intolerable Acts closed Boston Harbor until the tea in the Boston Tea Party was paid for, revoked mass charter, replaced Commonwealth elected officials, expanded Quebec territory, and forced civilians to hold British soldiers in their homes. The Intolerable Acts were pretty intolerable. As a result of these acts and increasing British control over the colonies, the colonists protested frequently. During one of the protests in Boston, British soldiers tried to get a group of rambunctious protesters in line and ended up firing into a crowd killing five civilians. This is referred to as the Boston Massacre. Now, let's discuss the road to independence and early colonial life. The First Continental Congress was called to make a list of grievances or things they were upset with because of Britain. Although people were irritated with the numerous acts, very few actually wanted to split from Britain during the First Continental Congress. Before the Second Continental Congress could even meet, a fight broke out in Lexington and Concord between the British and colonists. By July of 1775 Britain declared the colonists to be in rebellion and so the war was initiated. The Declaration of Independence was signed in 1776 officially declaring the war would be one of independence. Not everyone wanted to break from the British Crown though because they felt a sense of loyalty to the Crown and they were also scared of Britain's superior military. Loyalists and Tories were colonists who didn't want independence. Patriots and Whigs were colonists who wanted independence. Thomas Paine's common sense derided the monarchy and persuaded many colonists to fight the War of Independence and converted many people to become Patriots or Whigs. George Washington led the troops and ended up winning the war against Britain. The Treaty of Paris of 1776 established American independence two years after the final Battle of Yorktown. We won't go into any detail on military history since it's not covered on the AP exam. The only battle worth mentioning is the Battle of Saratoga. Saratoga is important because the American army was losing up until this point. After Americans won Saratoga, the French decided to join and help the Americans defeat Britain. After Saratoga, the American army began winning most battles and eventually the war. During Second Continental Congress, the first form of government was created, it was called the Articles of Confederation. The Articles were weak because they favored states, Congress couldn't tax or raise funds causing each state to print its own money, and there was no national army. Shays' Rebellion is important because it shows the weaknesses of the Articles of Confederation. When the farmers protested and shut down courts, the government couldn't do anything because there was no military to stop the rebellion. The Constitutional Convention took place in 1787 with the objective of creating a constitution. 
the Federalists supported the Constitution while the Anti-Federalists did not. The biggest obstacle in ratifying the Constitution was between large states who wanted representation based on population and small states who wanted equal representation. The Great Compromise created a bicameral solution in effectively creating a House of Representatives based on population and a Senate with equal representation. Another issue to address in ratifying the Constitution was slavery. Slavery was purposely left out of the Constitution because southern states didn't want to ban slavery since their economy depended on it, while northern states wanted to ban it. Northerners left the issue out since the southern states wouldn't budge. Now they had to come up with a way to count each slave when determining population size of states. This is important because remember the number of House of Representatives per state is based on population. The solution was the 3-5 compromise, which made each slave equivalent to 3-5 of a person in determining population size of each state. Creating the Constitution was very controversial. The first political parties were formed and they were known as the Federalists and Anti-Federalists. These are not the same Federalists and Anti-Federalists we discussed earlier with the people who favored or didn't favor the Revolutionary War. Federalists were led by Alexander Hamilton and John Adams, their party platform consisted of a loose interpretation of the Constitution, strong national government, construction of national bank, and pro-British policies. Anti-Federalists were led by James Madison and Thomas Jefferson. Their party platform consisted of a strict interpretation of the Constitution, favored farmers, opposed a national bank and were pro-French policies. During Washington's presidency, Hamilton was Secretary of Treasury. His biggest goal was to establish a national bank. Anti-Federalists like Madison felt it wasn't a constitutional right to establish a national bank that Hamilton wanted. Madison had a strict or narrow interpretation because he wanted to follow the Constitution word for word, while Hamilton had a broad or loose interpretation of the Constitution. The Whiskey Rebellion was the first rebellion the new government had to face. Farmers were protesting attacks on whiskey. Unlike Shays' Rebellion under the Articles of Confederation which wasn't stopped, the Whiskey Rebellion was easily stopped under the new constitution since there was a national army to do so. The final important thing to know about Washington is his establishment of the two-term rule. The two-term rule is not part of the constitution, nor is it an official rule yet in history, but Washington set the precedent that most presidents after him would follow to serve a maximum of two terms with the exception of FDR whom we'll discuss later. As Washington gave his farewell address, he warned Americans to stay away from political factions which are present-day political parties. He saw these parties starting to develop with the Federalists and Anti-Federalists and pleaded we don't get too focused on factions in the future, we clearly didn't listen to him since today we have the Democrats and Republicans and we all know how that's going. That's all for now. Thanks for watching, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe.